Today, the FDA took a big step in their attempt to crack down on the vaping epidemic. It banned jewels from being sold to anyone. This means in the U.S., businesses will be wiping them off store shelves nationwide. The FDA ruled Juul does not meet the agency's health standards and played a large role in the rise of youth vaping. Juul marketed its product as a safer alternative to cigarettes. Researchers found the product had the highest nicotine content of any e-cigarette sold. One Juul pod equals one pack of cigarettes. Even today, the best estimate is that about a million kids are using these products. Juul single-handedly made these products popular among our nation's adolescents. If FDA continues to ban the sale of the flavored e-cigarettes that are so popular to kids, we have an opportunity to reverse the e-cigarette epidemic before it becomes a long-term problem. Now, this ban comes after a two-year investigation into the company. It already limited the types of flavors the company could sell. Juul sent us a statement following the decision. Their chief regulatory officer says the company plans to seek a stay and is exploring all options to get back on the market. He says the company remains committed to serving the millions of adult smokers who use their product to transition away from combustible cigarettes, which remain on shelves. Now, part of the reason the FDA says Juul contributed to youth vaping is by their marketing practices. One study found teens did not fully understand the product. Take a look at this. The Missouri State Medical Association found 40% of teenagers didn't know that Juuls were actually e-cigarettes. 63% said they didn't know the products contained nicotine. Juul and its marketing practices have been criticized for quite a while. In fact, it led North Carolina Attorney General Josh Stein to sue the company back in 2019. He reached an agreement with the company last summer. It brought $40 million to our state and made Juul change how it marketed its product. The company had to get rid of any marketing that appealed to people under 21. Juul also had to stop comparing its product to normal cigarettes. Now, Stein reacted to today's decision. He says Juul is just one participant in the industry. He wants the FDA to make clear rules to make sure other companies don't manipulate teens. A CDC study shows teen use of vapes declined in recent years as more information has come out and more regulations were then put in place. The National Youth Tobacco Survey found 27% of kids used a vape in 2019. The most recent data shows that last number plummeted to just 11%. Experts attribute part of that to the pandemic. They say more action, like today's FDA ban on Juuls, is required to keep kids safe. Now, Juul and other e-cigarettes have gotten really popular. Some say it is the best way to wane people off of traditional cigarettes. Doctors say there's really not enough evidence to support that. Two Wants to Know's Ben Briscoe spoke with doctors who say the lack of data is causing some serious health outcomes. In Greensboro, Cone Health says vaping killed one of their patients in 2019. Dr. Muralee Ranswamy treated that person. This is really tragic, and uh, so we are still understanding and trying to understand why patients are dying from vaping. Since then, research around vaping has become less cloudy. We talked with four of the nation's leading health experts on vaping. All of them had the same message. Yes, e-cigarettes are dangerous. Vaping is definitely dangerous. That e-cigarette can be negatively impacted on a cardiovascular system. Are they dangerous? Absolutely. The first concern was vapes bought on the streets containing THC and nicotine. Sometimes they're putting toxic chemicals into those vape pens. <coughs> but they've also seen problems with nicotine vapes bought over the counter. There are metals in these cigarettes like nickel, um, lead, carcinogens like that, that while these kids' lungs and vital organs are still forming, you do not want to put that in your body. And so they're trying, there's a foreign substance in the lung and they're trying to, to fight that. And so the, the body produces fluid and cells that flood the lungs. And basically the, the lungs fill with fluid and cells and the, the patient feels like they're drowning. They get severely short of breath, their oxygen level goes down very low. And many times they have to be on a respirator. It's happening more and more in a slow way. And so there are a significant amount of kids that are, are vaping 
an excessive amount of time. And right now we're maybe not seeing the, the long-term effect of this, but I think in the thirties and forties, we're going to start seeing these, these young kids in clinic with some significant respiratory changes. What can that do long-term to your body? One of the biggest things is the, the permanent scarring that can occur in the lungs. So someone that could have healthy lungs their whole lives now could be on multiple inhalers. Researchers have also found vaping can hurt your brain. And as there's been studies now showing that this excessive nicotine in those developmental years of brain functioning can affect the way the synapses, the connections in our brains um, become more uh, firmly in place. And your heart. The people who were using e-cigarette, they had earlier onset of stroke. Earlier uh, onset. Of earlier stroke. onset of stroke, yeah. Neil Patel's study found the average age of a stroke victim from smoking tobacco was 59. But in people who vape, it's 11 years earlier at 48. And the CDC says as of last year, more than 2,800 Americans have been hospitalized from vaping. And there were 68 confirmed deaths. In general, it's, it's not safe. It shouldn't be done. Well, the FDA has officially authorized one e-cigarette um, tobacco flavored nicotine product right here in the triad by RJ Reynolds. And the FDA said that the company presented data showing that the product helps smokers significantly reduce exposure to harmful chemicals and traditional cigarettes. But the FDA has stressed that vapes are neither safe or FDA approved. They are simply just authorized for sale. Well, the jewel ban has people asking another big question. Lots of people tweeted something like this. If you're banning jewel for health reasons, shouldn't you be banning cigarettes as well? Well, the campaign for tobacco free kids said that jewels are more likely to be used by young teens. So banning them is a good place to start. But the FDA does have plans to restrict traditional cigarettes as well. They have released proposals to reduce the amount of nicotine per pack. A paper published by the FDA in the New England Journal of Medicine predicts cutting the amount of nicotine would drop the smoker rate in America from 12.5% to 1.4%. That's about 33 million smokers. The FDA also says lower nicotine levels could lead to 8 million fewer people dying from tobacco-related illnesses. The FDA is also considering a proposal to ban menthol cigarettes. A lot of smokers say those taste better to them. This is menthol. For example, Marlboro, all of this menthol, but different. This is menthol, all of this menthol. Okay. See, two shelf. Clerks in Greensboro say menthol is the most popular type of cigarette that they sell. Health, health experts say they're not just more popular among young people. 85% of black smokers use menthol cigarettes as well. It's the same population that does worse with lung cancer, that gets less access to treatment, and their survival is much worse. So to me, it's a no brainer. The FDA wants more public comment on this proposal. You can weigh in on the FDA website. If you're using a vaping product to help you in your journey to quit cigarettes, not all is lost. Juul may be off the market, but there are plenty of other companies out there that are still allowed to do business. WFMY News 2 at 6 is next.